GM, GM, GM. Uh, I want to do a quick walkthrough through the uh, micro stable, which is the simplest uh, implementation of a stable coin that I come, uh, could come up with, which is exactly 75 lines of code, which is pretty small. Uh, the only thing I use is an ERC20 implementation from Soulmate. Other than that, uh, everything is here. Um, so if we think about the stable coin, it's basically uh, you're lending uh, or you're borrowing uh, the stable coin against your collateral. So it's uh, it's actually is the way I think about it, a special uh, type of, uh, of lending protocol. So in this case, we have one collateral type, which is, uh, which is ETH, uh, to, me, to be more precise, uh, wrapped ETH. Um, and uh, you can mint against that a stable coin called uh, SHUSD, which is SHAFUSD, which is a stable coin, right? So uh, the SHAFUSD is an ERC20 token, uh, nothing special here except for the mint and burn function, which is only callable by what we call the manager. And uh, this, this is basically it for the, for the stable coin. If you want to, uh, actually, I think it would be interesting to look at a real, exa a real example of this. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the Dyad example. Uh, Dyad obviously is, has been in production for a couple of months now and uh, it's pretty similar, right? We have a mint function and you have this license vault manager modifier. So it's only callable by the vault manager, burn function, we have some internal accounting for minted dyad, but uh, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, then we have the, uh, the what we call the manager. So every every user interaction goes through the, the manager to deposit, withdraw, and uh, mint and liquidate someone. So the the you have a collateralization ratio inside the vault manager. And if you're under that collateralization ratio, someone can come in and liquidate you and take your uh, collateral. Obviously, as someone who is using the protocol, uh, you don't want to be liquidated. In this case, I'm using collateralization ratio of 150%. Uh, that's very conservative for, uh, for ETH. Um, I think uh, most protocols that use ETH collateral uh, are somewhere around 120, even 110%. Just for the for for this example, I'm using 150%. It's the same thing uh, which I used for diet as well. Um, so yeah, uh, what we have here as well is the ERC20 wrapped ETH, the SHUSD. We have an oracle. Obviously, you need an oracle uh, to get the current price of ETH and. Um, Actually, this is something I would love to uh, work on, which is a oracle oracle uh, stablecoin design, which I think is the holy grail. Um, this code code isn't audited, but with one audit, I think you can deploy that and it would be it would be a functional uh, stablecoin protocol. But I think there is uh, there is a design and in, in the design space of stablecoins which is somewhere around this complexity without an oracle. Um, uh, we, I, I tried to, to think about an oracle design, but it's, it's just very hard and gets, uh, gets very complex very quickly. But I'm still confident that it's, uh, it's possible. Obviously there's something like Ajna, which tried to do that for, for landing which I really admire and uh, I think their implementation is beautiful. It's just very complex. Uh, the protocol itself is very complex and the, uh, for the user as well, it's very complex as well. So one way to think about this, you're basically, you move, you're moving the complexity from the Oracle, you're using Chainlink or whatever, and moving that into the protocol and basically Basically, you you move it to the user, so the user 
uh, takes over the the role of an oracle, which is obviously very gas intensive because you actually have to execute a transaction if there are a lot of changes in the price and stuff. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, definitely take a look at Ajna, the white paper is great, uh, and the, the contracts too. Okay, so we have two mappings that we uh, keep track of. We keep track of the address to deposit and address to minted. Address to deposit is the uh, deposited wrapped ETH and the minted is the, is the mint uh, SHUSD. Uh, the system works on, uh, just works on EOAs. So we keep track of EOA to, 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 an, uh, to a new end in both cases. Okay, constructor, uh, very easy. We initialize uh, the, the wrapped ETH, uh, SHUSD, and, um, and the Oracle. Okay, cool. Let's look at the uh, functions. We have a deposit function to deposit wrapped ETH into your position. We have a withdraw function to withdraw wrapped ETH. We have a burn function to burn SHUSD. We have a mint function to mint SHUSD. We have the liquidate function to, to liquidate someone. And we have the collateralization ratio to get the collateralization ratio of one uh, EUA. Okay. So actually, let's start with the collateralization ratio. Uh, the collateraliz uh, collateralization ratio or the collateral ratio is just it's just uh, the total value of your collateral uh, divided uh, with your... Uh <laughs> it's actually funny. I'm using minted diet here uh, because I just copy-pasted this from the actual diet contract. Uh, obviously, it has to be SHUSD. Uh, SHUSD and minted... SHUSD. Um, actually, let's let's push this. Okay. So do you get the? Actually, you can. Let's just say minted. Let's just say minted. Okay. So you get the amount of uh, SHUSD minted. If you have nothing minted, you have. Uh, a very high collateralization ratio, we just get the max of the UN 256. If it's not zero, then we get the total value, which is just the deposit wrapped ETH times the uh, current wrapped ETH price. And the collateralization ratio in the end is just the total value of your collateral divided by the minted SHUSD, which means you mo the more you mint, the lower your collateralization ratio gets, and the more collateral you have, uh, the higher it gets. And if you're under that 150 threshold, you get liquidated. So you can, in order to uh, to increase your collateralization ratio, you can burn some SHUSD, or you can put in more collateral. Uh, let's see if this builds. Fix. I'm very good with commit messages, as you can see. Okay, um, cool. So deposit, very easy, two lines of code. We transfer wrapped ETH from the message of sender and we increase the address to deposit mapping accordingly. Withdraw is a little bit more interesting because um, you cannot withdraw collateralization ratio. Uh, you cannot withdraw uh, your collateral if it will, uh, if it will put you uh, in uh, in a liquidatable uh, uh, mode so so we have to check okay so first we update the uh, the mapping but then we check the collateralization ratio with the updated uh, deposited uh, mapping right so we update the deposit mapping first then we check the collateralization ratio if it's if it's not higher than uh, the min collateralization ratio then it doesn't work if it's still higher, then you can withdraw that. Withdraw that. Okay. Burn two lines of code. Address to mint it gets updated. Um, you just burn SHUSD, and we call SHUSD with burn uh, the internal burn function of the ERC twenty. Mint again three lines of code. Actually, you know what? I I love symmetry, so let's do this.
let's do this. Uh, mint three lines of code. You want to mint new SHUSD. We update your mapping. We check if the collateralization ratio is still higher. And if it if that's the case, we mint. And uh, we we took a look at withdraw. Okay. So the last function is the liquidate function. And the liquidate function, in this case, it's very easy. You can get very fancy with the liquidate function just as a reference. Let's look at the uh, diet again, because this is the, the one I'm most familiar with, obviously. And uh, it, gets, uh, it gets, gets complex very quickly. Uh, because you uh, you can do partial liquidations uh, and stuff like that. But in our case, a liquidation just works like this. Uh, you burn all the SHUSD that someone minted and you get all the collateral uh, for that. So if you're between 100 and 150%, you make a profit as a liquidator. If you're under 100%, you don't make a profit anymore, which is a bad debt, what we call bad debt, which is very bad for the protocol. So that's why you have the buffer uh, of a 50% between 100 and 150%. Let's uh, push that as well. And uh, and yeah, this is basically it. I think this is a, a fully functional uh, stablecoin design. Obviously very, very simple. Um, I think the the worst uh, thing about this design is the liquidation function. Uh, someone, uh, some, uh, something like partial liquidations would be would be very helpful, because if you have to fully liquidate like this, you have to make sure that you have a lot of liquidity of the stablecoin, and some dex, uh, which is uh, not always the case. Cool. Uh, the other thing I'm working on is uh, is microland and microland is the simplest form of a lending protocol which is this but this isn't finished yet so uh, next video is going to be probably uh, about that cool if you have any questions um, if you have any questions please free, uh, feel free to reach out um on uh, on github or twitter or whatever it's uh shahu zero x on both um uh, micro stable is of course open source it's on uh, it's on uh, github i should update the should update the readme as well awesome yeah thanks for tuning in and i'll probably see you on microland bye bye